Hello everyone, welcome to the practice session. So we are practicing exercise two and we completed four steps in the previous session. So in step one, we could observe that there are two distinct realities. One is the self and the other is body. One is the conscious entity and the other is material entity. In step two, we observe that there is exchange of information between the self and the body. The self is giving instructions to the body and the self is receiving sensation from the body. And there is no material transaction here. It is merely of information. In step three, we observe that it is the self who decides while instructing as well as reading the sensation from the body. And the self is the seer, doer, and experiencer. In step four, we observe one thing that even though sensations are taking place in the body, the self is not the sensation. I am not the sensation. I am not a part of the sensation. But rather, I am at a distance from the sensation. And thus, I read the sensation with my own decision, being at a distance from the sensation. And I hope you have tried to observe this in the past week. Now, with that readiness to explore further, we go to discuss step five. So we'll discuss step five in two parts. Part one we'll discuss today and part two in the next session. So we'll discuss step five partly today. And to reiterate that through all this, what we are essentially trying to see, we are trying to see that the self and the body are two distinct realities. And through our direct observation, we are able to see the difference between their needs, activities, and response. And thus we are able to make out that I am the conscious entity while body is a material entity. And we are able to see that there is merely exchange of information here, the body being the material entity and me being the conscious entity. These are the seven steps. Now, in step five, we'll try to see how we associate the meaning to the sensations in the body. So as you could see in the previous lecture that sensations are taking place in the body and the feeling is there in the self. And we are associating a feeling to some sensation and thus there is some meaning being associated to the sensation, isn't it? Now, if you look at the sources of sensation, there are three sources. One is that there are events happening within the body like there's pain in the head, there's heartbeat here, which may be rapid or slow at times, isn't it? And due to that, there are sensations in the body. And if you observe, you can see that there are sensations in every part of the body, in every cell of the body. We are not aware because we are not paying attention. But if you pay attention, you are able to make out that, yes, there is sensation in every part of the body. The second source of sensation is the situation outside a physiochemical change like heat or cold or some noise, isn't it? And that has an effect on the body. And due to that, there are sensations in the body. So you're passing by the road and you listen to some horn of a vehicle. Now this horn is an event taking place outside the body, a physiochemical change. And this has an effect on the body, isn't it? This is another kind of sensation. And the third thing is the effect of the behavior of the other person which first reaches your body through sound of words, touch, etc. And then there are sensations in the body. So if somebody touches you, that also produces sensation. If you hear somebody's sound, that also produces sensation. So these are the three sources of sensation. So you can pause a bit and try to make out whether you are able to distinguish between these three sensations. So the first one is those which are happening in the body. The second one is the events taking place outside the body, the physiochemical changes taking place outside the body, which have an effect on the body. And the third is the behavior of the other person. Okay, somebody talking to you. Now the voice is reaching your ears and then from ears it is reaching you. So when it reaches ears, it produces sensations in the body. So essentially through all these sources, the sensation is going to be there in the body and you are going to read the sensation. So you'll see that none of these sensations reach the self directly. I read and taste only those sensations that I consider important. I read and taste them only as and when I consider it necessary. So I assign some importance to the sensation. So, so many people may be talking in a room, but I listen to the person with whom I feel concerned or whose words I consider as important at that point of time, isn't it? So you'll see that if I consider something important, I pay attention to that sensation. 
and it's not that every moment i am paying attention to the sensation i am reading the sensation i read it when i consider it necessary isn't it and i and we had taken examples of how there are so many sensations and you know, happening in the body and there is so many events taking place and we had discussed that there are so many sensations in the body and there are so many events taking place outside the body but we treat the sensation by your own choice when you consider that as important and necessary so we'll observe how the sensations in the body are used by the self this is something that we are going to discuss now so we'll study how we associate meaning to the sensation due to some external events so there is some event outside so there is some event outside a physiochemical change or behavior of other person isn't it now this is going to have an effect on the body somebody talking to you has an effect on the body somebody touching you has an effect on the body or some physiochemical change a cool breeze which is blowing is also having some effect on the body and this produces sensation in the body now there is something happening in the body isn't it these two things now here you are and you decisively read and taste the sensation so you take a decision that yes this is something important for me so for example the uh, breeze is blowing and you are not paying attention but if you start feeling cold then you start paying attention isn't it so you decisively read and taste the sensation then you associate meaning to the sensation in conjunction with your sanskar which is based on either knowing or just on assuming so every time you read the sensation you associate some meaning to it you know by which you decide what to do next so that meaning could be based either on your right understanding that is knowing or just on some assumptions something that you have come to assume without knowing and then you are influenced or not influenced by that particular sensation and then you decide your feeling right or wrong you feel happy or unhappy so somebody is talking to you and the words are reaching you and you you have one kind of meaning associated you are listening to the words very carefully and then you are suddenly reminded that this person had been conspiring against me and still i am paying attention to his words now the moment you have some association of like conspiracy associated with the words of the other person they will see that your feeling has changed isn't it so you are associating some meaning to the words earlier you were associating one kind of meaning now you are associating some other kind of meaning earlier you were treating the other person as your friend and now you are treating the other person as a conspirator now the moment you change the meaning that you associated to the words okay some difference is going to take place in you so you are influenced or not influenced depending upon the meaning associated and then you decide your feeling whether you feel happy or unhappy earlier you might be feeling happy because you are considering the other person as a friend you had associated this meaning to the other person and now you are associating the meaning of a conspirator to the other person and then feel unhappy talking to the person so you react okay when there is some assumption based sanskar and you respond when there is some knowing based sanskar so if you have the knowing that the other person intentionally is sound he or she is preconditioned in some way and because of which the other person is not behaving properly with you then you will respond if you are assured of the intention of the other person you are able to see that the other person innately wants to make you happy but is not able to make you happy because of some wrong sanskars because of the lack of competence then you will respond but if you are not able to see that innately the other person wants to make you happy and you assume that the other person wants to make you unhappy and that's why the other person has been conspiring against you then you react okay and there is some assumption based sanskar here the first case it was some knowing based sanskar now based on this you instruct the body so you decide to express it outside and then you instruct your body and then the body acts according to the instructions and there is some expression outside this is just one example that i took taking another example okay i took the example of a behavior of other human being so let us say there is some physiochemical change happening 
now let us take another example let's say a mosquito sits on your body okay and bites you now this is the case of a physiochemical change some event outside so the biting of the mosquito has an effect on the body and then there is sensation in the body and you consider it important to keep your body healthy so you decisively read and test the sensation but if you are lost in your work you might not read the sensation the mosquito may be biting you but if you have time and you are able to consider it important then you are able to read the sensation and then you associate the meaning to the sensation okay so whether this biting of mosquito is good or bad you associate some meaning and that is dependent on your sanskar okay which may be just based on knowing or assuming and then you get influenced or not influenced depending upon your sanskar and then you decide your feeling right or wrong and then you feel happy or unhappy about it so you might welcome the biting of a mosquito if you consider something as a good omen for you and you may also consider it something bad something not desirable so it depending on the meaning that you associated to the biting of the mosquito you are influenced or not influenced and based on this then you react or respond you choose what to do and what not to do isn't it and then you decide to express outside you instruct your body so you instruct the body that the mosquito has to be killed and then the body acts according to instruction and there is the expression outside and the mosquito gets killed you could also decide that let the mosquito fly away so you would have given a different kind of instruction to the body in place of trying to kill the mosquito you would have tried to let it go that could be another expression that you could have so you'll see that depending upon your sanskar you are influenced or not influenced and then you react or respond depending again on the assumption based sanskar or the knowing based sanskar and you decide to express it outside and then the body acts accordingly and then there is expression outside so try to observe this i took two examples one example was of a behavior by some other person and the other example was of a physiochemical change taking place outside the body which has an effect on the body so the mosquito is flying in the air and now it sits on the body and then bites you so this is something happening outside the body now from the time the mosquito has bitten you it has an effect on the body now a similar thing can be observed in all these activities where there are some events taking place outside the body so if you are there in a room and somebody turns the television set on it is a physiochemical change happening outside the body and then the sound reaches you there is effect on the body there is sensation in the body and then you decisively read that is test the sensation and associate meaning so whether you have to watch the tv or not to watch that will depend upon your sanskar right based on your knowing or assuming and then you are influenced or not influenced right and then you react or respond then you decide how to express it outside so if you feel that the tv need not be turned on this is some time to study and the tv will be disturbing so you can decide not to have the tv on and then you instruct your body to tell the friend that let us uh, switch off the tv and there is expression outside so try to observe this in all those activities which are happening with you throughout the day now the third case is when some event is taking place inside the body within the body so for example uh, you are feeling hungry so what is happening there is hunger inside the body and what is happening there there is lack of food inside the body so there is some event in the body and it has sensation in the body then again you decisively read or test the sensation so if you are watching a movie which is very interesting for you you may even ignore the hunger that is there in the body and keep on watching the television but if you are not in gross somewhere else then you decisively read and test the sensation and then you associate a meaning so you say that this is dinner time now and i must have food right let's say on that very day you have fast then even though the sensation is of hunger in the body you decide not to go for the food so you are associating some meaning to the sensation so 
you are getting some sensation of hunger if you have associated the meaning that yes today is a normal working day and i must have food by this time this is one kind of meaning if you feel that no today is my fasting day and i should not have food at all then you associate some other kind of meaning and then based on that you get influenced or not influenced and then you react or respond and then you decide to express outside the body you start your body and then the body acts accordingly and then there is expression outside so you feel that today is a normal working day and i should have dinner by this time so tell the other family member that let us arrange for food now it is dinner time on the other hand if you feel that today is the day of fasting and you not have food at all so do not instruct the body to ask the other to arrange for food does this happen or not you see that these things are happening every day only that we are not observant of it we are not able to observe it we are not aware of it isn't it so there is an assignment here observe the three sources of sensation one which are the events happening within the body two the situation outside a physiochemical change and three the effect of the behavior of the person which reaches your body and in a single day you observe how the three sensations are being produced in the body isn't it so observe this and note down in a journal we will go to study this further so in this week you have to observe the three sources of sensation in your day to day life in your day to day activities right and try to find out what is happening there so in today's session we try to observe how the self associates meaning to the sensation so the sensation may be the same but we may associate different meaning to the same sensation or we may associate the same meaning to different sensations or the meaning that we associate to the sensation may vary from time to time place to place isn't it so try to observe the three sources of sensation in this week and then we'll try to study further how we associate meaning to the sensation in the next session so as an assignment you try to study the three sources of sensation in this week and we'll go to explore further in the next session thank you